I had come to, to work at Cathedral, it was 1987, I had just come back from uh, my novitiate year, my final year of studying to be a brother, so I was a very young brother, and he was big, I just remember, he was just big, and, and just took up a lot of space, just in the room, psychically, just, just, there was this energy field around him. I remember just thinking, this guy can never not be noticed. When I first took the job, Brother Brendan told me, do you want to coach, or do you want to be the principal? The bishop wants you to pick one. And I told Brendan, I said, uh, I said, I'm, I want a coach. He said, good, because I already told the bishop you were doing both anyway, but we're going to pay you for one. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to Leo, everybody was quiet. And um, he was handsome, and he had personality, and, and it scared the heck out of me. Ernie, uh, we're going <laughs> to learn to comb our hair. <laughs> about Leo that one thing I don't think people talk about enough okay was you'd show up for workout you know we had to be in the water at 5:30, so you'd show up about 5 15 you'd get dressed you know get in your swimming suit or whatever get in the water and he would run you through workout you know and about seven o'clock he'd pull you out and at least once a week he'd pull you out and he'd lecture you on things things like you know always being being prepared, being on time, being ready to work, how important that was. Keep the tradition alive, let's bring it home for the Irish, you hear me? Yeah. 100% club? Yeah. For sure? I want to see your progress report. My parents were, were those kinds, they were that kind of people, you know, their children were the best. And in Leo's home, the same thing. You know, you had to be the best. You, why do anything if you weren't going to do it to, to the fullest? And I think we both brought that to our schools. Okay is not okay. And for Leo, it's excellence, excellence. Mediocrity is not in the picture. If you're gonna be anything, you're gonna be the best. Growing up, I always heard, be happy with what you have. Don't be uh, ungrateful, which is an important lesson, but I think what was missing from that was be the best. Don't conform, yeah. you know, only the sky's the limit. And um, I always heard over and over and over again was, you know, there is no limitation. And if you're going to do something, you'd be the best or don't do it. Yeah. And that's something I never heard before, you know, growing up in the lower valley, you know. It's uh, a lot of kids probably haven't. And so it was a whole other way of thinking that kind of molded me into the person I am today. His great line was, you know, the best exercise is reaching down and helping somebody up. But, but that's, that was his, his mantra, I think. Uh, I think every day, that one of the reasons he was in, always in an awesome mood is he helped somebody every day. And, and not just one person, I think a lot of people. I think he inspired kids uh, to, to keep after the swimming and, 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 then, and then by extension to keep after whatever their goal was in life. I think he helped parents manage kids who were out of control. I think he helped teachers manage kids who were out of control. I, I think you always walked away feeling better and bigger um, like him. At first, when I started swimming, he was kind of like with kid gloves. But, you know, after the first few months, three, four, five months, it was, it was like anybody else, you know. Um, and, you know, he never did cut me a break. And, and honestly, that's really what was so helpful and was so useful was that I was treated just like anybody else. You know, do I wish he would have cut me a break? There's times I think I would have liked it. <laughs> but in retrospect, you know, thank God he never did. 
because Leo was part of their lives, you know. They, they always said my kids is real funny, but they said we had a mom and a dad and a Leo in our lives. I want everybody in the auditorium in five minutes. And, you know, you were all down there. And, of course, all the faculty were like, what's going on? We don't know. And I'll tell you something. He, he was a master speaker. Uh, and you could hear a pin drop in that room. And we were literally lining the entire uh, edge of, of, the, of the auditorium. Every kid, every, every adult is in there. And just could hear a pin drop. And he announced to us that he'd been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, I remember what he said. He said, uh, I'll tell you what I tell the doctor. I, I'm going to make you famous because you're going to cure me. And, um, and, and it was so typical of him that, that, you know, we all walked out of there with great hope. Uh, the hope never ended. Never. Till the bitter end. And, um, and I was the consummate cheerleader, always. We're going to fight this and we're going to do whatever it takes. And um, it was rough. Very rough. Coaches have to will it, not, you know, give exactly what you want, know the directions. And don't, and don't fear what you don't want. You could probably use that advice, don't you think? Oh, shh. Yeah. You're not supposed to be you around me that way. <laughs> yeah? If you listen to you. I, I need this advice. Mm -hmm. I need it. And my wife is... I need this advice, and I believe it. And but I've been in a fear mode since April. Since April, I haven't had a funny day since April. And you come tonight, and I'm laughing, and I'm peppy, and I'm not trying to run away. I could, I, I need that advice. My dad comes up and says, don't be a horse's ass. Get out there, get with the people. And I'm just so used to being able to give more. And what I can, I just hid. So yeah, I need the advice. I just never listened to it until right now. The disease is relentless. The disease is relentless, and it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, where you come from, what you do, how good or how bad you are. Cancer, cancer is relentless, and um, it started just destroying him. And he battled it. He was in pain. He was sick. Uh, he lost his hair. He lost weight. He was yet to the outside. He was still the, the man. He, uh, he died in April, and I think he was at school probably till March. So many kids who, who, who were here because of his generosity, because he, he'd pick up a phone and make a phone call, and, and just, you couldn't say no to him. And so he'd call some parent uh, and say, you know, I need money, I need X amount of money for this kid, and I need it by tomorrow, and, and it was there. Um, and he never made a big deal, and there was never like a, a list of here's all the kids I helped. Um, but I think I try to model myself after that. He paid out of his own pocket for kids that were stuck. People, people of means that had tough situations all of a sudden from one day to the next devastate their families and they were going to have to take their children out of cathedral. And he said, absolutely not. No way. He pulled out his checkbook. There were several times that we were kind of strapped, but it didn't matter because he knew, he knew this was the better thing to do, the, the important thing to do at the time. He knew that investing in a child's education was the best thing we could do. There were kids that were, just because they weren't of means, didn't mean that they d didn't have the potential or the, or the right to be in this wonderful school. The children are the future. They are the one resource that El Paso needs more than anything else. And giving here, giving to the scholarship, helps cathedral, help the city, help the children. The children will help El Paso. You're giving to the future of El Paso. I just wanted to say thank you so much to every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. You are all the ones who made this scholarship possible. 
and I just wanted to say thank you for allowing me to lay down the path to success for the rest of my life. And we see more and more young people come back and, and they want to transform this city and so we have people in leadership, uh, in politics and, and in business and they're dreaming big for this whole town. They want to lift a city up and, and that's awesome and I'm very proud that those are cathedral guys who are, who are at the, the edge of that uh, leading the way. And I was thinking of names to call my uh, agency uh, production company and uh, one name kind of kept resonating and that name was Leo. So. I proudly name my business Leo Marketing. Action! And every day when I look at that sign in the morning, you know, I kind of uh, laugh to myself and, um, and kind of know that he's there and he's watching over me and all the lessons he taught me are still resonating to this day. Leo is one of those people that when he touched your life, it affected you forever, you know. And, and I was blessed to have been able to have Leo in my life as long as I did. He made a lasting impression. I think living and dying. You know, he died with dignity. He died um, with his head up. He died still with his number one attitude. And I think people remember that. And it made a lasting impression on a lot of young men. And uh, for years afterwards, it was still number one all the way. Those hogs were encouraged on a regular basis that even though coach isn't here, he taught you something. There was a message at this school. And I, I think his spirit is there. There's a legacy. There's a Leo legacy. Bless us and keep us all in the palm of your hand, now and forever. St. John Baptist, tell us all. Live Jesus in our hearts. Amen.